we want to find the volume of the square base pyramid given here using integration. We could use the basic volume formula for a pyramid given here, where the volume is equal to one-third times area of the base times the height. Let's go ahead and do this and see if we can get the same results using integration. So using the basic volume formula, we'd have the volume of the pyramid is equal to one-third times the area of the base. Notice how the base is a six by six square, and therefore the area of the base would be 36 times the height, which we can see would be 10. Well, one-third times 36 is 12. 12 times 10 equals 120. So the volume is 120 cubic units. Let's see if we can get the same results using integration. Notice how if we cut slices, or cross sections of the pyramid, they're perpendicular to the y-axis, and therefore we can find the volume using this integral here, where the volume is equal to the integral of a of y, integrate with respect to y from a to b. Again, we'll integrate with respect to y because the cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis, and the thickness of each slice would be delta y. So we'll begin by determining the approximate volume of a slice, and then we'll use this information to set up our integral. To find the approximate volume of this slice here, we'll find the area of the face, then multiply by the thickness, which again is delta y. So the tricky part about this question is how to determine the area of the face as a function of y. We know that the face is a square, and therefore the area is equal to s squared, or this length times this length, we'll have to use similar triangles to write these lengths as a function of y. Let's do this on the next slide. If we cut the pyramid vertically, this would be our slice, and notice how we have two similar triangles. We have this large triangle that has a base of six units and a height of ten units, and then we have this smaller triangle here that's similar to the larger triangle where the base has length s, but for the height of the smaller triangle, if we know the total length here is 10 units, and we let this be y units, notice how the height of the small triangle would be 10 units minus y units, or just 10 minus y. And because we have similar triangles, we can now set up a proportion to write s in terms of y. Remember, when we have similar triangles, corresponding sides are proportional, so s is to six as 10 minus y is to 10. Now we can cross multiply. S times 10 must equal six times the quantity 10 minus y. So we have 10s equals six times the quantity 10 minus y. And now to solve for s, we'll divide both sides by 10. So we have s equals three-fifths times the quantity 10 minus y. So this will be the length of any side of the square face. And therefore, the volume of any slice would be equal to s squared, which is, again, three-fifths times 10 minus y squared times the thickness which would be delta y. So this is the approximate volume of a single slice, and therefore the volume of the pyramid would be approximately equal to the sum of the volume of all the slices, which we could write as a of y sub i times delta y sub i, where this is a of y. So as the number of slices approaches infinity, this approaches the volume of the solid, and therefore the actual volume is equal to the integral of a of y, which would be three-fifths times the quantity 10 minus y squared dy integrated from zero to 10. Before we find our antiderivative, let's go ahead and expand this. We have the integral from zero to 10 of three-fifths squared is 9 25 and then the quantity 10 minus y squared would be 100 minus 20y plus y squared. Now let's go ahead and find the antiderivative. 
we'd have 9 25ths times the antiderivative of 100 is 100y minus 20 times the antiderivative of y, that'd be y squared over 2, and then plus the antiderivative of y squared, that'd be y to the third over 3, from 0 to 10. Notice how this term here would be minus 10y squared. So we'll first substitute 10 for y. So 100 times 10 is 1,000, minus, this would be 10 times 10 squared, that's minus 1,000, and then plus 10 cubed over 3, that'd be 1,000 thirds, and then minus, notice when y is 0, all three terms would be 0. So we have 9 25ths times this is zero, so we just have times one thousand thirds. Notice how this simplifies nicely. There's one three and three, and three threes and nine. And there's one twenty-five and twenty-five, and there's forty twenty-fives and a thousand. We have three times forty, which equals one hundred twenty. Which of course gives us the same volume as the volume formula for a pyramid. So this is one hundred twenty cubic units. I hope you found this helpful.